On vacation, uh, Jeff Zeleny, ABC News senior White House correspondent in Washington, is uh, following the tea leaves for us. Good morning, Jeff Zeleny. Good morning. Uh, it's probably better that they went on vacation. They you can't do any harm when they're on vacation. I think that's a pretty good sentiment. I mean, there's not a lot of uh, complaining about the fact that uh, you know, there won't be uh, five weeks of, uh, of watching the uh, paint dry of the Senate and the House and not doing much. And we all know that the only... You know, the only time anything comes together is in the 11th hour. So it's, I think it's good for the senators and representatives to go back, listen to what their constituents are saying, and uh, come back to Washington uh, in September. You know, but the, what their constituents are saying is that they have a, an approval rating of 17, and yet they continue to do whatever it is they do. 17 on a good day. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, one of the numbers that is really actually surprising and worrying some members of Congress, usually these polls say, look, I don't like Congress as a whole, but I like my congressman. That's not the case this year. Um, I was talking to a, a, a Senate Republican just yesterday who showed me a poll who said, God, this kind of worries me. 57% of voters in his state said that they don't like their congressman or their senator. So I think that you know, this has really hit home that it's the inaction, it's just the, you know, the dysfunction that is kind of, you know, sort of uh, boiled up for years and years is now, um, you know, uh, pretty high. Yeah, they, they, they're leaving Washington, and everyone's talking about how little, how many little bills they've passed. But the bigger issue is the bills that they haven't passed, and that is whether it's um, uh, the budget stuff, and you've got the the farm bill and immigration, and I mean, they're not doing anything, and there's no urgency to do anything. I mean, you're right. The farm bill is a key example of something that, you know, year after year after year, that has just been something that has passed. It is just something that, you know, there's always a, uh, a coalition of farm state uh, members of Congress, you know, versus uh, um, urban members of Congress, you know, because there's a food stamp uh, provisions in there, but... You know, there really is this sense out there. In part, it's fueled by, you know, some supporters of the Tea Party. It's fueled by some uh, worry from some of these members of Congress from getting primaried. You know, it's really easy now to say, look, I'm going to run against uh, my member of Congress because he's spending too much money. Well, the reality is they need to approve a budget, and neither side seems willing to do that. And it's very real that on October 1st, there is a looming government shutdown if these guys and gals don't get a budget together. Uh, I'll get to the budget in a second, but first let's touch uh, on immigration. When these members go home to their home districts, everyone's saying that the business community is lobbying these Republicans to get something done on the immigration. Uh, What are the chances of these Republicans actually coming together and passing something on uh, on the immigration front? I think the skepticism is running pretty high for good reason um, about a a broad immigration reform uh, going through the House. But one thing that is very different about this immigration debate than it was you know, back in 2006, which I covered as well, it strikes me as very different, is that the coalition of people, of groups that want immigration reform now, is much different. You mentioned the business community. That's true. Also evangelical groups and high-tech groups for visas and things. So there really are more people, it seems to me, more voices on the pro-immigration side than there certainly were last time, but the voices are louder on the anti-immigration reform side. But um, look, the system's broken. I mean, no one can argue that. So I think that at the end of the day, something will come together on immigration, but if it's a piece-by-piece approach um, or a sort of a grand deal, we'll just have to wait and see. But, uh, you know, no one can think that the current system is working. What happens to uh, House leader John Boehner. Does he survive this? Is there an exit strategy for him, or is he just going to throw his hands up and just say, this is this is ridiculous? Some days when I look him in the eye at his news conferences or passing him in the hallway of the, uh, of the Capitol, it looks like he's looking for the exit door or the ejector seat. You know, he probably has one of the toughest speakerships, toughest time to be speaker, because his, you know, his Republican group, uh, you know, it's a cantankerous bunch, but I think at the end of the day, he will not be speaker for for life. If this is his last term, he's really focused on getting some type of a grand bargain, a fiscal deal in place. I think he would risk his speakership on that, and by risking his speakership, that would mean sort of going forward to do something that the majority of his Republican um, 
a caucus does not want. I don't think he'll do that on, on immigration, but on a budget deal, I think that he would um, sort of take one for the team, if you will. But, you know, um, he plays it pretty close to the vest here because he uh, you know, wants to keep his, his folks together as long as they can. You mentioned the uh, b- uh, showdown, the budget showdown. You're starting to hear some Republicans come out and say shutting down the economy and holding it hostage is a stupid strategy, even for our party. They seem to be calling out some of their own members. I mean, that is definitely happening in the Senate. I've been very surprised by you know, some very conservative senators. Tom Coburn of Oklahoma. It's hard to find someone who you know is more of a you know a uh, a fiscal watchdog, a, you know, a fiscal conservative. He says, "Look, guys, this is the stupidest thing to do to defund Obamacare." As senators Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, Mike Lee, a few others are pushing for that A, it's not going to happen. You would need 67 votes in the Senate to override a presidential veto, but B, it's just simply posturing to the base. So you really have uh, right now, the whole Senate is has, has turned over by almost half in the last four years. So there's not as much institutional memory. Some of these new senators are playing to an audience that is outside of the Capitol. And surprisingly, some of their Republican colleagues are calling them on it and calling them on it uh, pretty uh, sharply. Yeah, it's pretty interesting stuff. Jeff Zeleny, ABC News, senior White House or senior Washington correspondent. Jeff, thanks for checking in. Have a good day. You guys have a good day in St. Louis. Thank you. You got it. 728 here on the Big 550 KTR.